Honestly, no, I shouldn't even have a bike license. <laughs> Good morning, life. Good morning, sun. How are you, skies above? Morning. Welcome back to the channel. Ever since the Isle of Wight, I've been waiting for the summer to return. We haven't had, we probably haven't had two good days in a row since the Isle of Wight videos. Forecast today is very, very mixed, but I've been waiting for about four days. Just got back from a wedding, haven't taken a bike, and I've been waiting for four days to take the street scrambler off-roading. And I can't wait. I'm just gonna take it out. It doesn't matter if it's raining or not, but before I take it out, I've got a new cover from XYZ C10 which is a bike cover company. And I've got an $8, which equates to about six pounds, a six pound discount, but it's so good because even if there's a sale on at XYZ, this discount code works on top of that. So I'll get it out and show you how it looks. So these come in different, different sizes, but for this one, it's about 38 pounds. But I do know that XYZ have a sale on at the moment and then you've got this six pounds or eight dollar discount on top of it making it extremely good value. Done. Two elasticated straps like that, one here, one at the front of the bike and this is what I love, especially when you're in London it's got two loopholes there so you loop your chain through here and through the wheel. Almost forgot to say it comes with a one year warranty and it's available worldwide. So that's it, use code HELLO, block capitals, I'll put it there, use code HELLO, and it's specifically on the xyzctem.net website and I'll just include it there. I'll also include in the description. But that's, that's done. Let's go scrambling. That sign is new since the last time we came. Clearly some people were taking their motorbikes off there. <laughs> and I'll be completely Guilty. honest. Guilty, that was me. I actually thought we were allowed <laughs> down there, but you're not. So this is the byway. I guess, you know, you don't want to annoy the locals. So just stick to the designated bit. But this is what we call in the UK, Green Lane, completely legal. You can take a motorbike up here, but just make sure that you stay on the proper, uh, proper track. And here we are. It's like a jungle since the last time we came. So much rain and with the sun everything's just been shooting up. There's a reason I've come back to the exact same place as the Mutt Mastiff 250. And that's because this is, for a novice off-roader like me, what I would class as a challenging off-road bit that does scare me a bit. But with the Mutt Mastiff, I managed to go right down to the bottom of this valley that we now can't see because it's so lush. And then all the way back up the top, but I was so close to my limit. And I want to see how the street scrambler with an off-road riding mode copes with Metzella, I guess you'd call these dual purpose tires, dual sport tires. I'm really curious to see how it is. And there's another reason I'm curious about this because I did some Googling this morning and I found something shocking. Listen to this list carefully because I was amazed. Ducati Scrambler 1100 is 189 kilograms. Moto Guzzi V88 TT 194 kilos. Triumph 1200 XC, the big Triumph, 205 kilograms. BMW R9T Scrambler, this is the only one I'm quoting the wet weight, so it is a bit lighter than this. The wet weight is 223 kilos. That's with a full tank of fuel and all of the oils. 223 kilos. Triumph Street Scrambler. Dry weight with no fuel, 223 kilos. 
This is a heavy bike. I don't understand. I don't actually understand how it's so heavy. I had to quadruple check all of those weights because I couldn't actually get my head around it. This is not a light bike at all. It's actually heavier than the 1200 XC. Physically it feels smaller, but it's significantly heavier. And please let me know in the comments. Why do you think that is? I genuinely don't know and would love to know. So this is a, a gigantic bike, relatively speaking, compared to the little 150 kilo Mutt Mastiff. I, I'm, I'm a bit kind of, I'm genuinely a bit wary actually, because I always say if you're going off-roading, lightweight is king. Lightweight is everything for fun, maneuverability, get yourself out of tricky situations. 223 kilos trying to manhandle up a steep slope that's like that. It could be really difficult, but this is it. We're right at the entrance. I am genuinely scared, but I'm gonna walk down, make sure the path's still clear, and we'll figure out Monica filming on me putting a strap on, but I'm nervous. Right, because I'm so scared, I'm going to walk down to the bottom and make sure it's okay. See, on the mutt, the little 150 kilo mutt, it was fine. I just raced down without even checking. But I'm very scared now. So I'm gonna take you down with me and kind of recce out what this off-roading section's like. It is so much more overgrown than last time. Okay, so this is the bit. Actually, I'll be, I'll be honest, I struggled even on this bit on the mutt last time. The mutt did struggle here, so this will be the first challenge. Well, actually, this will be the challenge getting back up. But I'll take you to exactly where I hit my limit on the mutt. Okay, right, so we're down at the lowest point of, okay, there's one of them. It's really hard always on videos to tell how steep it is. There's the first one, I didn't try that. I came this way on the mutt and here we go, here we go. This is, oh. Okay, here we go, this is the path. And the problem is if you get stuck, you've got to somehow, it's actually genuinely, it's hard walking up here, but this is the path. And if you get stuck and can't go any further, whew, it's very hard to back all the way down. But I need to get up all the way up this, this slope, okay. Okay, this will be interesting and then all the way back down through there and back up to the top. This is gonna be a challenge. Unfortunately, the camera just turned off as I was coming down, but through thick vegetation, totally fine. But this is the slope for the mutt, and I've now tried, I've tried five times with the Triumph, and so far, that's where I've got. So I'll try again. I'll get Monica to film and see what it's like from a third person perspective, because when I've got the helmet on and everything, it's hard to see, but I haven't got very far so far. Here we go.
Okay, nightmare situation. Now I've got to try and lift up this bike and get it back down the hill. But it's a lot harder. It's really interesting with the weight. The weight makes a very big difference compared to the mud. So I'll try and lift it and get it back down. Okay, nearly there. Okay, that's a good next step. I think one more of these. I just get my breath, lift it, roll down the hill, off for coffee. Monica, I cannot tell you how worried Monica looks right now. This is the last time you're coming here. Never again. Nightfall. Help me! <laughs> Woo! Gonna lift it so it's vertical. Gonna lean it on the other side. I'll turn the power on down the hill. Laughing all the way. Thank you so much for watching this triumph related <laughs> footage and content because this is probably the last one we'll be given. Also, thanks so much for watching any off road and green lane stuff because Monica said this is the last time I ever do yes, it. Yes, this is the last time. Okay, so now all we need to do is get back up the hill to get out, and that's the hill that the Mutt Mastiff couldn't get up. Oh, if, if I do the same again, I can't. I'm collapsing a bush. Or I'll have to leave it. I'll have to. I can't get out of this valley thing. <laughs> I've walked around the whole area. There's only one possible track that we could get out of, maybe. Otherwise, I honestly don't know what to do. We're in the very bottom of the valley. There's one track, maybe, that's very slightly less steep. But if, if I can't get out of there, I'm 100% serious. I don't know what to do. Also, it feels like I've done about 25, 200 kilo deadlifts. <laughs> okay. Wish me luck and I'll see you in two minutes if this works. And the fuel light came on about 15 minutes ago. So I'm not 100% sure I've got enough fuel to get to the petrol station. So, so, so lucky. Even that was hard. Had to go all the way around the side to a slightly narrow bit. Come close to the bike, so I'll tell you one thing I've learned. And I knew it, I knew it, but this confirmed it. It's not bad about the bike, but dual sport tires, they don't work on anything apart from dusty ground, or it must be dry. It must be very dry, otherwise, the advantages they have are over even even new tires in my mind and i welcome any comments it, they don't work in wet they don't work so if you buy any type of scrambler off-road bike whether it's ducati triumph bmw if it has dual sports it will not work if it's wet full stop there'll be almost no grip at all and another thing i've learned compared to the mutt mastiff which made it up that hill slightly more off-road biased tires so there's more grip maybe slightly drier as well but the one big thing, it's 150 kilos. It's so feather light, you can manhandle, you can rip it up. You're never worried about getting into a situation, but this at 223 kilos on a pretty steep slope on its side, 
it, it's seriously tough. You can get stuck in this and actually not get the bike out. I was genuinely worried that we wouldn't get the bike out then. So you can get yourself in situations. The heavier the bike, much, much more hard for off-roading. The hardest thing I've ever done, off-roading, 100%. To be fair, the Triumph is extremely rugged. There's not a scratch on it. One scramble owner has told me that this completely protects from the heat. And that, that's pretty good. Oh. Yeah, that's pretty good actually. I haven't found an issue with the exhaust. You get used to it incredibly quickly. And that does protect from most of the heat considering I've been almost redlining it for about the past 40 minutes or so. So from an exhaust point of view, totally fine. But really, yeah, if you wanna go off-roading, whatever bike it is, it must, must have proper off-road tires. Gear for the day. Complete coincidence, like last video, with the Scrambler or RST. So this is the RST, forgotten the name, insert here, jacket. Brixton, RST Brixton jacket. I, I really like this. It's wax cotton, heavy duty, built in sh elbow and shoulder padding. Very nice, cool jackets, washable as well in the machine. So brilliant for days like today when I've almost ruined it. You all know, AGVX 3000 helmets. RST Kevlar jeans, 130 pounds for these. Really great looking, great fitting jeans. And the RST Roadster boots in black today, as opposed to the brown. But all of this stuff, I'm six foot one, 80 kilos, size large, 32 inch waist, and the shoes or whatever you like. But it's great quality and really rugged gear, the RST stuff. And the Matlock gloves, RST, 40 pounds. Knuckle protection, great value, just brilliant value and great quality as well. Gloves for life, 100%. Okay, Monica's gone back to the car and to apologize for what's just happened. I said I'd take her to a little village called Ainsford to get a coffee. I've had about 10 minutes just to cool down, but yeah, still dripping buckets. I need liquid, bike needs a drink as well, but it will, it will clean up fine. I've just checked, no scratches or anything, so hopefully Triumph won't be too angry. That must have been higher than I thought because I was going through and the engine cut out. I it, said don't go. It must have gone as high as the exhaust and now I was literally having to run the bike through like with my legs on the floor so now they're completely waterlogged. I know what must have happened. The water didn't get in the, in the exhaust but there's so much friction because it's deep water that the engine just cut out and stalled because I didn't give it enough. I don't know what I'm doing. I honestly have no, I shouldn't even have a bike license. It's ridiculous. Let's go get a coffee. So the water, there's a sign there. I don't know if you can see it. 
but it says it's one foot, one foot deep at that level. So I guess nowhere near the top of the exhaust, nowhere near. So it must just have been the friction or the force from going three with, through with the water level must just have stalled the bike so I wasn't giving enough. I guess it must be. And I'm getting mighty tired of your traveling ways and of listening to that jackass Bray. Had a few questions. What's the street scrambler like on motorways? So, it, is it powerful enough for overtaking on a motorway? And there's no question at all. It's more than powerful enough. Never have to worry. You can overtake anything within reason. No problem at all. I get up to 90 miles an hour perfectly quickly. The only reason I didn't go faster is because I never really go above 90. But up to 90 perfectly fine overtaking brilliant more than enough power just to sit comfortably on the motorway at 80 more than 80 all day so that's no issue at all compared to the triumph scrambler 1200 xc the xc is much much more of a beast it's much more powerful but on real roads for me personally i like i like this amount of power on the street scrambler it's just the right amount of power and i do understand why people go for the 1200 xc it's it's more of a beast it's more powerful it's physically bigger although my mind is blown a bit by the fact that it's significantly lighter so that's kind of blown everything up that i thought i knew about it but um i personally i like this street scrambler for real roads it's still a heavy bike actually that did surprise me so for off-roading it's heavy, it's seriously heavy actually for off-roading, this bike. And I'm now, even now, just moving my arms because I had to try and lift the bike from a steep incline, but also hold the brake as I was lifting it so it didn't roll down the hill. And just that feeling on my wrist now, very, very painful. I, I can't tell you how happy I am to be sitting here now with the coffee because I really, really mean it. There was a bit there where I genuinely thought that we weren't going to get out of that situation. If you've got dual sport tyres, it doesn't matter what bike you've got. It doesn't matter if you put it into off-road mode. And this is the best lesson I've learned from having a, a few off-roading adventures now. Off-roading mode doesn't really help too much. It doesn't help you get up a hill. It only stops the wheels spinning. So in reality, all that happens is try to get up a hill with off-road mode on the wheels just stop spinning so it doesn't actually help in any way getting up the hill the only thing that helps getting up a hill are proper off-road tires and lightweight helps with that so put the off-road tires on the scrambler street scrambler It'll be a different machine 100 percent and we'll wrap up the video here because it's been a massive failure so obviously you won't but don't take any advice from me off-roading because i am worse than useless off-roading i'm genuinely interested though Please do let me know your thoughts on dual sport tyres and is there a tyre that's genuinely good off-road and genuinely good on-road? Is there one that crosses both on-road and off-road? Does it exist or am I being completely unrealistic thinking that that could exist? Monica actually said that she wasn't sure if she even wanted to post this YouTube video so hopefully if you're watching this I would have convinced her and she would have posted it. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.